Hi, my name is Yazdan Madani from Centre of Nanotechnology and Regenerative Medicine at the University College London. Um, my PhD project is about the application of carbon nanotube for the treatment of cancer under the, under the supervision of uh, Professor Alexander Seifalian. In this video, I'm going to present about the functionalization of single mole carbon nanotube and the binding to cancer cells. So if I just want to briefly explain about what carbon nanotube is, I would say carbon nanotubes are materials which are made from carbon and they look like a tube when we look at it under transmission electron microscopy. With the naked eye, they just look like a powder. Carbon nanotubes can be found in a single mole or multi mole and they've got different properties. For example, they have the ability of absorbing the near infrared light and generating heat, so it can be used for thermal treatment of cancer or they have the property of loading the drugs to the cancer cells so they can be used for drug delivery. As you can see from the pictures, we've got the carbon nanotubes loaded, functionalized, loaded with the drugs and delivered to the site of action and so the drug get released. So basically, we have the maximum therapeutic effect with the minimum side effect. We want the large amount of drug to be delivered to the cancer cells, and that's what the carbon nanotubes can come into. Thermal treatment of cancer, as I mentioned before, one of the applications of absorbing near infrared light and generating heat. This picture shows that we've got a, a breast which is exposed by the, uh, which has got cancer, so we've injected the carbon nanotubes, and then we expose it to the near infrared light, and so the carbon nanotubes destroy the cancer cells, and post treatment, there is no cancer cells anymore. But there is a problem with this material, and that's the lack of biocompatibility. And in this experiment, we've tried to functionalize the carbon nanotube in order to bring the biocompatibility of the carbon nanotube to the level where it can be used for cellular work. Functionalization is a process where we coat the surface of the carbon nanotube with a material which improves the biocompatibility. We've treated the carbon nanotube with acid in this experiment, HNO3 and H2SO4, and we've heated this um, uh, complex at 120 degree centigrade for two hours. And we've done different tests in order to uh, show that the functionalization of the carbon nanotube has happened correctly. We were expecting to see that the carboxylic acid is formed on the surface of the carbon nanotube. So we've done a transmission electron microscopy. As you can see from the picture, a thick black layer is formed on the surface of the carbon nanotubes following the functionalization, following the treatment of the carbon nanotube with the acid. We think these are, this is a carboxylic acid, but we have to do further tests. So we've done an FTIR uh, experiment. And the graph clearly shows that a COOH is formed on the surface of the carbon nanotubes after we've treated the carbon nanotubes with the acid. We've done a confocal microscopy. We've basically uh, added Stractividin Fitzy labeled to the carbon nanotubes that we've treated with the acid. And then we uh, took a confocal microscopy picture and it shows that the fluorescence spots appear on our picture, which basically means that the NH2 group of the extractivity is made bond with the COH group of the carbon nanotube. So basically that's another way to show that carbon nanotube has obtained the COH group. In this experiment we use the MCF7 which is a breast cancer cells and basically we've added HPA uh, FITSI label to the breast cancer cell on this picture and in another experiment we've treated the HPA FITSI with the single mole carbon nanotubes that um, we functionalized it. And then we've added to the MCF7. And the picture shows that a large amount of uh, green areas form on the cell membrane of the MCF7, which basically means that the carbon nanotube had delivered a larger amount of HPA FITSI to the, carbon, to the cell membrane of the MCF7. Near infrared light experiment, basically, as I mentioned, one of the properties of the carbon nanotube is that it absorbs the near infrared light and generates heat. So, then we've treated the carbon nanotube pre and post functionalization with the near infrared light to see the temperature changes. And the graph clearly shows that post functionalization, the temperature increase happens with a greater magnitude. We've used 
a machine called Atana Biosensor, which basically measures the attachment uh, strength of material to the cell membrane and the detachment. And this material can be antibodies, could be proteins, and other things. Basically, in this experiment, we've used lectin and we've added to the MCF7, which is the breast cancer cells, at different concentration. And as you can see, there is an attachment and detachment taking place. And in another experiment, we've used the lectin, but we've added to the carbon nanotube, which we functionalized it in, a, in steps that I experiment, uh, uh, explained before. And the graph shows that the attachment is still taking place. And that's a good news, which means that the carbon nanotube has not destroyed the lectin structure. And also it means that the carbon nanotube uh, has made bond with the lectin, which is through the COOH uh, group that is formed on the surface of the carbon nanotubes. And that's the end of my presentation, and thank you very much for your attention.